Welcome back to my channel everyone. Today is the second part of a three-part series, shooting your personal best score. Today we're gonna to be talking about breaking 90. Now as I talked about in the first video, my golf career started well, pretty nonchalantly. Uh, I started playing golf freshman year high school just thinking I would go out there, have fun, showed up 30 clubs first day of practice, really had no idea what golf was or even how it worked. I pretty soon got addicted to it, went from my first ever tournament being a 126 in high school to my last ever tournament in high school uh, being a 73. So during those four years, I showed the biggest amount of growth that I have throughout playing golf so far. I didn't really have coaching or anything like that. It was really just me doing my research, watching a lot of YouTube, playing a lot of golf, and just figuring out how to play the game of golf in as few strokes as possible. So when we talk about breaking those three levels, breaking first 100, breaking 90, and then breaking 80, I had to go through each of those levels, and each of those different levels, I learned different things about the game of golf. Now, funny enough, breaking 90, which we're talking about today, was actually the easiest level for me to break. I realized soon after, once I realized how I could break 100, what kind of things I had to do to break 100, I was able to cross that 90 threshold not too long after. Now, breaking 80, that was a completely different story. That took me a lot longer, and we'll talk about that next video. Now, I really believe if you're constantly breaking 100 but you're not breaking 90 there are definitely a few things you can do out there on the course that I'm going to talk about today that hopefully can get you shooting the 80 soon the first thing I want to talk about is what it takes to break 90 now believe it or not you can make 17 bogeys and one par and you can shoot an 89 now 17 bogeys that's a lot of bogeys that's not the best golf in the world however what the important thing is about breaking 90 is shooting for that bogey number and keeping those doubles and triples off the scorecard. If you're looking to break 90, double is your enemy. And bogeys most of the time are your friend. When I realized that I really only had to make one par in a round to break 90, my entire mindset changed. One thing that worked for me is I completely set aside nine holes of a round. So I looked at the nine hardest holes of a golf course as, as far as the handicap and I said, those holes, I'm shooting for bogey. I'm not even gonna think about trying to make par on that hole. So let's say if the second hardest hole was a 560 yard par five, nice and narrow, like down the left side, I was not gonna hit driver. I was gonna hit a four iron out there, then I was gonna lay up, lay up again, get onto my fourth shot, two putt, and walk out of there with the six. Now, I didn't do that with every single hole that I considered a bogey hole. If I knew that I could get on the green in two or I could get on the green in three, I still tried to do that. However, I was much more okay with walking away with a bogey knowing that was one of the half of the tougher holes of the golf course. And then if I happened to make par on one of the nine tougher holes of the golf course, that allowed myself to feel better if I made a bogey or maybe even sometimes a double on one of the easier holes. So really changing the mindset for me saying, okay, on these nine holes, these are the holes I'm gonna shoot for par or better. That's what I'm gonna do. And then on these nine holes, I'm gonna really try to grind for my par, maybe even make bogey. Now, you can make a couple doubles and definitely shoot in the 80s. However, what the problem with that is, is anytime you make a double, you pretty much just wasted two bogeys that you can make. Now for me, in tournament Play, the easiest way I found to stop making doubles and triples is to make sure that I never incurred any penalty strokes. Now doing this, I kind of had to play safe on some holes and really play for bogey. But knowing that my mindset was okay with making bogeys on certain holes really helped me lay back, not try to force it in spots I knew I wasn't capable of forcing it, and really just helped me feel more comfortable making those bogeys instead of trying to force it, thinking I have to make a par and end up making a double or triple. So for an example of that, let's say there's a par four, 400 yards, you got bunkers all the way down the left and a pond all the way down on the right. Now for me, I saw that pond as my worst enemy. If I hit that ball on the pond, I'm dropping on the other side for hitting my third shot. I'd much rather hit my second shot from a bunker. Likely that I get on the green from there? No, but instead I'm gonna hit it up there close to the green for my third shot hitting it close to the green rather than hitting my third shot from 150 yards away after I get my drop from the water. So let's say I see bunkers on the left, I see water on the right. I am not taking a chance with it at all. Let's say I hit more of a fade ball flight. I'm gonna aim left of those bunkers, okay? So if I hit it straight, I may be a little bit left of the bunkers, a little bit in trouble, but I'm still in play, okay? If I cut it, I'm probably in the bunkers, and if I slice it, I'm in the middle of the fairway. However, if I'm aiming for the middle of the fairway and I play that ball flight, if I slice it, I'm in the water. If I fade it, I may be in the water. So I'm gonna aim left of those bunkers and just try to hope for that I hit my normal ball flight. And again, even if I hit it in the bunkers, it's not the best position that I want to be on that hole, but I'm hitting my second shot instead of hitting my third shot. I incurred no penalty strokes, and am I gonna hit it on the green from there? If I'm trying to break 90, if I'm at that skill level, probably not, I'm not gonna hit it on the green, but I'm gonna advance it up the golf course, keep it on the golf course, and give my shot a better chance of getting it up and down for par or getting it up and in two putts for bogey. 
Again, holes like that, a hole where uh, there's out of bounds or there's water, it may be tight. That was one of the holes where you can just be okay with making a bogey, playing for that bogey, knowing that you can make those 17 bogeys and one par and still shoot in the 80s. Now, the next thing I talk about was a really, really big help for me in order to break 90, and that was to stop looking at the pin. Even when I first started playing golf and I couldn't break 100 to save my life, for some reason, I was aiming for every single pin just because that's what I thought you're supposed to do, right? There's a pin on the green, you aim for it, you try to get the ball in the hole as few strokes as possible. However, what I didn't realize was the more I aimed for the pin in tight pin positions, I was setting myself up for failure based off where I missed it. So let's say the pin was tucked back right corner, I'm trying to go for that back right pin, I leave it pin high and to the right, I'm leaving myself with a short sided up and down that I never would get up and down and I'd walk away with a bogey or a double bogey being like, like what's my problem, I was trying to go for the pin. But once I realized that if I just shot for every single middle of the green, depending on where I missed it, I still was probably hitting the green or very, very close. If I'm aiming for the center of the green, I realize that my dispersity of shots is still gonna be somewhere in a spot where I have a better chance of getting up and down. So even if that pin's in the back right corner, I'm gonna aim for the middle of the green because if I come up a little bit short, I'm just on the front edge of the green. I can make a two putt, sometimes a three putt, but I'm still securing my bogey. If I hit a little bit long, then I'm on the back of the green, pin high with the pin. If I hit it long and right, I went right at the pin. If I went long and left, I'm still on the green. Okay, so aiming for that center of the green really helped me realize that it's not important to go after every single pin. Now, as you get better and you feel more comfortable depending on the day, yes, it's okay to go out a few pins, but especially if they are tucked or you're just not that good of a ball striker, there's no reason you should be going for pins. Hit the middle of the green, secure your two putt, sometimes three putt, sometimes one putt. Walk away with your long birdie putt, walk away with a par, sometimes walk away with a three putt, but getting the ball in the middle of the green consistently, you'll be so surprised by how fast your score is lower. Now, at that level when you're trying to break 90, even if you're trying to play for the center of the green, you're not always gonna hit the green. We're human, we're not pros, and that's just what happens. So what I realized quickly on is I needed to develop two go-to shots. I know a lot of people teach these days around the greens, you need to have all these different shots with all these different clubs. For me, that didn't work because anytime I tried to practice either one of those shots on the course, I didn't have that much experience with it and I wasn't confident with it. So what I decided is when I was practicing my chipping off the golf course, I was gonna take two clubs, two different lofts, two different style shots, and I was gonna become masters of those two shots. So I took two clubs, my 60 degree and my pitching wedge. Anytime I had to put some loft on a shot, I was gonna use my 60. Anytime I was gonna hit a bump and run, I was gonna use my pitching wedge. Then what I did is when I practiced on the practice screen, I was always hitting it either with my 60 or with my pitching wedge. I wasn't trying any bump and runs with my 54 or my seven iron. I wasn't trying any high shots with my 54 or a gap wedge. All I did was either hit a 60 degree and a pitching wedge. And a lot of coaches will preach against that. For me, that's what worked because I felt comfortable with a 60 degree or a pitching wedge in my hand. So anytime I was on the course with a pitch shot to a hole, I knew, okay, I'm either gonna use a 60 or I'm using a pitching wedge. And I felt very, very confident with both those clubs in my hand, whether I was gonna use a bump and run or I was gonna try to put some more air under it and spin it. So that's the last thing I would encourage is to find two go-to shots around the green, not trying to get too fancy, not practicing flop shots all the time, not doing bump and runs to all these different clubs. Get really, really comfortable with two different wedges in your hands. That way, depending on the lie, depending on how far away you are, depending on the green speed, you can use those two different clubs to your advantage when you're on the golf course. Now, I said that was the last thing. Truly, the last thing I have to say about breaking 90 is making sure you're getting every par putt to the hole. Now, what I mean by that is I see so many golfers who are in that almost breaking 90 level, leave their par putt short. You're never giving a putt a chance to go in if you leave it short. If you are a high handicapper or someone trying to break 90, I'm okay with you leaving a birdie putt short. However, I'm not okay with you leaving a par putt short. I see so many times a high handicapper have like a 25 foot for birdie. They're so excited to make that birdie putt. They try to make it, they blow it seven feet past. And then in their head, they're like, oh, I just hit it so hard. I don't wanna blow this one past. And then they decel on their par putt and they leave it a foot short. So at this level, if you were trying to break 90, any Anything within 10 feet of a par putt you are trying to make. To break 90, making par putts inside 10 feet is your best friend. So when you're out there practicing on the practice screen, I definitely recommend hitting lag putts and then hitting a lot of putts from inside 10 feet. Lag putts because when we're aiming for the center of the green, we're gonna have some longer birdie putts and then inside 10 feet because that's gonna be the majority of where our par and bogey putts are going to be that we have to make to break 90. So just to recap my main tips onto breaking 90. First, remembering what it takes to break 90. You only have to make one par and 17 bogeys and that's your 89. Second is to realize you're not going for par on every single hole. 
I liked when I was trying to break 90 to divide it up into nines. The nine hardest holes and the nine easiest holes. I shot for bogey on the nine hardest and I shot for par on the nine easiest. It is very important that no triples or quadruples are on the scorecard and really, really try your best to keep doubles off the scorecard. Easiest way to do this, keep the ball away from water and out of bounds. Even if that means playing towards the rough or to the bunkers, it is much easier to do that and to keep a solid number on the scorecard. Next, making sure you are aiming for the middle of the green on probably 90% of your shots to the green. Then we talked about obtaining two go-to shots around the green, whether that be with whatever two clubs or whatever two heights of shots that you want, whatever two types of styles you want. Getting control over two shots that you're comfortable with on or around the greens is gonna be so important for your game. And lastly, making sure any putt you have within 10 feet, you are getting to the hole. 10 foot par putts, 10 foot bogey putts, that's gonna be a lifesaver in the game of breaking 90. Now I hope this video was able to help some of you out who are trying to break 90. Remember, I'm not a pro, I don't come from a golf background, but I did come from someone who knew nothing about the game of golf to someone who got solid as an amateur level in the game of golf. I'm coming from someone who really didn't have all the coaching in the world, all the money in the world to get coaching, but really just figured out ways to play golf that uh, worked for me and hopefully will work for you too. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment if it helps, leave a like, uh, make sure to subscribe, and I'll be back for the third part of a three-part series, Breaking 80, next week. Thanks guys, peace out.